some of these videos I really think about in terms of like, I wish I had this when I was younger, because I certainly know that I've done this myself. But today I want to talk about this idea. Are the movies or TV shows or clips that you're using in your classroom, what's the best way to use them so that they are a tool and not a crutch? Let's get into this one. This question actually comes from our last episode of Sunday Night Teacher Talk. It showed up in the comment section and I didn't have a chance to get to it. So I wanted to answer it here. The question was, how do you use videos in your classroom? From short five minute clips to full length films, what strategies do you find the most successful? And so I think on the front end, I wanna absolutely acknowledge that showing clips of movies, TV shows, YouTube videos, even music videos can absolutely be a way of furthering student understanding, of helping differentiate lesson plans and really aiding visual learners. It is absolutely a tool and something that can be used for good. On the flip side, I don't think that it's talked about enough that there is a downside. And so one of the ways that I've transitioned from using the sort of tech in classes is that I moved from showing a whole movie or a whole episode of a television show when I only needed a clip. Side note, before I talk about any of these movies, I make sure that I check with parents and get permission because some of these are particularly violent. Just want you to know that. So before we read Lord of the Flies, we talk about how William Golding had lived through D-Day. I want my students to know what that is. So we should watch the first 15 or 20 minutes of Saving Private Ryan, which is a really violent scene. But I wanted the students to get a glimpse of what this might have been like and then that how that affected the writer's view of humanity and how that's gonna play into our story at large. Also, when reading Lord of the Flies, we talk about the plane crash on the front end and we have this whole activity around plane crashes, but we watch either the first 10 minutes of the first episode of Lost when they get into their plane crash, or we watch the plane crash from the Tom Hanks movie, Castaway, to just get a sense of like what this might be like. And then the activity starts as soon as the plane crashes, the boys are around the classroom and that's a whole nother lesson. When we're doing Shakespeare, I look at soliloquy through the eyes of Bernie Mac, and we watch the first five minutes of a Bernie Mac video. Also, when talking about comic relief, we'll usually watch Marvel, but a lot of times my students love Deadpool, so I'll find like a clip, a clean clip, which is not easy to find from Deadpool, to tie in what comic relief is to back that up so it's not just a definition on the board. Now, the second mistake I see teachers make, and I know that I've done this myself, is that you're showing content in class that has zero relevance. Because look, sometimes, you know, you need to have student meetings and you need it quiet in class and you need kids zoned into something and you don't need the questions that come from doing an assignment all the time. Sometimes it's trying to get grades done because it's the end of the quarter. Sometimes it's trying to put comments into the grade book. Whatever it is, there are those days that you need that it's like, I don't need to be making more work. I need to be finishing this and getting this done. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that especially for those of us that are like, you have to go home and you have kids or, or a second job or other responsibilities that you need to take care of and you can't be doing this for four hours tonight at home. So I wanna say on the side of supporting this idea of showing something, there's a time and a place for showing something that has zero relevance to the classroom. And I think the two best examples I've seen of this are I once worked with someone who made pancakes the day before winter break and the whole student class watched Charlie Brown Christmas special. And it was just fun. They knew it was coming up. They were looking forward to it. Sometimes they were working towards that, but you're creating these moments that are intentional, that you're sharing a moment with students. And it's not doing nothing. It is completely creating a classroom culture, doing something special together, sharing a meal together. And the benefits of that are just incredible. Also, I worked with a number of folks that like celebrating Cinco de Mayo was really important to them. So teachers would decorate their classrooms. We once had a taco bar in our classroom. My co-teacher dressed up like a taco. We watched Coco and we celebrated Cinco de Mayo. How do you create engaging, captivating lessons? Is the only way to dress up in school and to have a million dollar room transformation? No, that's a really great way, by the way, but I'm talking about creating captivating lessons for regular classes and for those super reluctant classes where like every time you just try and have fun or do something cool, it doesn't work out. This Thursday, February 29th, I'm gonna teach you how to take the ordinary to extraordinary in class, help you unlock your potential in creating captivating lessons that are gonna make your students want to wake up, sit up, come to class, and participate in what you're doing. Join now by clicking the link in my description box and we'll see you on the 29th. Now back to your video. So if it's not a special moment, how do we pick things that are relevant when we need to have, we're trying to find time to get stuff done? One, it's look at something you've been learning in class and how can what you're watching 
be a review of some of that material or be a preview of some material that's coming up. So I might create a lesson plan around the first episode of Stranger Things. And I might have my students looking at things like exposition, characterization, or foreshadowing as they're watching this whole episode is that's basically the setup for the rest of the series. If I'm running a science class, how might I look at something like Wally, e or that Matt Damon movie when he's stuck on Mars? I can't remember the name of it. Imaginary extra credit if you're the first person to put that answer in the comments. Could you watch the Pixar film Inside Out and look at things like psychology or SEL, something of that nature that you're going to pull from that? Having some kind of brief work that students could do that's very self-explanatory and that they don't really need your help on. So you can focus on what you need to do and students can have that time and use it as a review and not just another movie in another class. And it's here's the thing. We know that that leads to classroom management issues a lot of times too. They saw it already. Why do we have to watch this? I already saw it. I already know what's going to happen. Kids spoiling the end from one another. So instead, it doesn't matter if you watched it before because you didn't watch it through the lens of which we're talking about today. You didn't watch Wally -E and talk about climate change. You didn't watch Inside Out and look at it through the lens of puberty or trauma or whatever else you're talking about in class. Next, one of the things I've really used, and I've watched this with my students, like sitting in class watching this on purpose, especially when I have lower level readers, is watching films or shows in their original language with subtitles. So one of my students' favorites of all time, a movie that many of my students have never seen until I introduced them to it is Spirited Away. There's not so much dialogue that happens so fast that it's overwhelming for students, but this incentivizes everyone reading along so they understand what's happening. So we're watching it in Japanese with English subtitles and students are following along. And this is a great way to get reluctant readers to read every day. And the last way I think that using this tech in class that's really useful, really fun, and really easy is as a review. I've talked about this in my vocab videos and I have a whole video that I'll link in the description below on how we use music videos to review for vocabulary every week. But I do this when I have a lot of literary terms that are connected with like Shakespeare, for instance, where we will show a clip from a movie or a show and talk about, was that an aside or a soliloquy? I might show a clip and say, what can we infer about what was going to happen next in this film? After reading Lord of the Flies, we usually watch an episode of The Simpsons called Das Bus, and then we compare and contrast what happened in the book, what did The Simpsons get right, and what was complete nonsense in the show. So there's just a few ways that we use this in class and talk about big ideas using TV, movies, and, and YouTube videos and all that stuff. I'd love to know a way that you and your students are doing this in your own class. So if you wouldn't mind leaving that in the comments, don't forget to like and subscribe and all the YouTube stuff. And we'll see you in the next video. Peace.